afternoon is a document that is progressive in nature and that seeks to protect individuals who either serves in government or out government in whatsoever organ. My lords, in my address, I'll majorly deal with the question of the purported nomination of Professor Kidure Kindiki and whether the lifting of the conservatory orders will culminate into his swearing in and what that means in respect to the provisions of the Constitution. My ladies, my lord, it is clear that a purported process took place in Parliament that culminated into a name being forwarded to Parliament for voting. For, for voting. My ladies, my lords, it is important for us to interrogate the circumstances that led to the forwarding of this name. And whether or not that process is confirmed with the dictates of the Constitution. My ladies, my lords, on the 18th of October, we walked to what my learned friend Mr. Ongoya submitted on a memorandum by the President. The said memorandum, my ladies, my lords, indicates that the president sought approval and confirmation from the independent electoral and boundary commission. And the answer that he got was sufficient enough to afford him the courage to forward the name for voting in parliament. But the question, my ladies, my lords, that begs an answer is, did the IBC possess the requisite constitutional capacity to submit or and or approve the said name for purposes of voting in parliament. My ladies, my lords, the answer to that will be found in Article 88, as read together with Article 99 and Article 137 of the Constitution. Article 88, my ladies, my lords, creates the Electoral and Boundary Commission. And in the same article, my ladies, my lords, creates the functions of the said commission. You also find the same answer, my ladies, my lords, in the amended IBC Act. Most importantly, section 10 and section 11, which I'll be dealing with in the near future. My ladies, my lords, article 99 as read together with article 137 provides the qualifications for an individual to hold the office of the president and by extension the office of the deputy president it is important to note my ladies my lords that in the event anything happens and the current president is incapable of executing the functions of a office of the president the purported name if sworn in will the person will be the person to take over but will he have met the necessary requisite qualifications and who is mandated to ensure that these qualifications are met? We submit, my ladies, my lords, that the only constitutional organ capable of executing that functions is the Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission. The court will take judicial notice, my ladies, my lord, that the commission as currently constituted falls lack of the commissioners. And the question, therefore, my ladies, my lords, in the event the commission is called upon to evaluate the qualifications under Article 99 and Article 139, so that then, my ladies, my lords, a name can be submitted in Parliament for voting, who then is capable of doing that in the absence of the commissioners? My ladies, my lords, we submit that IBC as currently constituted can only execute administrative functions and it has no capacity or ability to execute the function under Article 99 as read together with Article 137 of the Constitution. 